guys, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another tutorial. So you probably recognise the jumper and the makeup look. I did record this look on my channel the other week, but I've done this video at the same time as well. So just ignore the eyes and things like that. But today I thought I would share a few tips with you guys on how to get a flawless foundation base. I actually have been wanting to do this for a very long time but Jake always gives me ideas on what I could do on my channel as well and he actually said to me the other day why don't you just do a foundation um, video on how to get like a flawless skin and things like that. Literally Jake has no idea about makeup but when he came up with this idea I was thinking hmm I have been thinking for a very long time and he did mention it to me I thought it's probably about time I actually give you a actual in-depth tutorial on how I do get a flawless base. I always get compliments on my um, makeup, but the one I always get compliments on is how smooth my skin always looks, especially like with having scarring and blemishes and things like that. It is a lot harder for me to, like, you know, get that flawless base, especially with having oily skin as well. So I thought I would share a few simple tips and tricks with you guys. So yeah, if you want to see how I achieve the flawless base, then please keep watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my instagram but yeah without further ado let's get into the tutorial okay so diving right in i've already got my eyes done because i have just been filming a new tutorial and i'm doing like two in the same go so just ignore the eyes but jumping straight into like the my foundation routine and how to get like the really nice flawless skin you always want to go in with a really nice moisturizer now i always apply day and night moisturiser religiously I always always apply it I never miss a day where I moisturise my face just because my face is very very oily but if I don't like moisturise it I do suffer and it does get really really dry and it starts to break out which is the reason why I have got a few breakouts when I was like getting a cold and I was off work for a while obviously my routine was like literally all over the place so I was forgetting to moisturise so I have got like a few breakouts but I think my skin is starting to calm down just a little bit so literally the favourite moisturiser which I've used since I was 16 and I've never changed it is the number 7 Beautiful Skin Night Cream this is the night cream and I also have the day cream but I've literally just picked the night cream up thinking it's a day cream but in the day obviously I use the day cream before my makeup and then the night I use the night cream for my makeup so you always want to apply a moisturizer just because first it is really good for your skin it's also hydrating skin before you apply like all the makeup um and it also smooths out your base just before you apply that makeup. Now, obviously, you're probably thinking, well, you can't put foundation straight on top of your moisturiser, which you're thinking correct. And honestly, I don't go in with my foundation straight over the top of my moisturiser. So I literally have a wash and things like that. And then I let this moisturiser sit in for probably bet somewhere between a half an hour to 45 minutes before doing my makeup. Now, that is when I have got a lot of time for going out. But obviously, if you're in a rush and you haven't got a lot of time for your moisturiser to sit in place and soak in properly, which... Honestly, I've got to admit, probably six times out of ten, I ha I am in a rush doing my makeup, especially if me and Jake have got plans and I haven't timed it right. I probably let this sit in probably 15 to 20 minutes and that is just when I am literally doing my brows and my eye makeup. I do let it sit on my skin for quite a while so you want to make sure you do that before you apply any foundation and any primer on to your skin. Make sure you moisturise and please 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 don't like search the best moisturiser for like dry skin or oily skin or whatever. You do need to find the right product to suit your skin. I think that is the main problem like of skin nowadays. We always kind of research what the best moisturiser is and we just go on other people's opinions you always need to find a product that suits your skin and suits your um combination whether it's oily whether it's dry whether it's oily to dry no matter what it is you want to make sure the moisturiser does suit your skin so it is very important to moisturise your face before you actually apply anything else but then after what i like to do is go in with like two different primers in one of my tutorials i posted like the other week or something like that i did tell you I switch my primers up quite a lot but I always end up using two and the one out of them is I always use all the time but the main two I absolutely love and I swear by is the Urban Decay primers now this one is my all-time favorite as you can see like I'm running low running low on this so I do need to get some more soon but this is the optical illusion complexion primer which is smoothing and it's got argan oil in and it's pore perfecting 
but also the one that I swear by but I don't use a lot just because I do forget about it is the Urban Decay Self Adjusting Complexion Primer. It's got adapted, it adapts to your pigments, it's soft focus effect and it's showing control. So the reason why I pick these two and why they suit my skin so good is because this one has got shine control so you know I've got oily skin and my oil always no matter how mattifying the foundation I use is and no matter how oil controlling the foundation is meant to be I always always see through my foundation with my oils because how oily my skin is so this one is showing control and it does control a lot of my oiliness don't get me wrong I still have a little bit oil oiliness come through um, my foundations but not as much as I would without using this and then moving on to this primer this primer I absolutely swear by it does definitely fill your pores and I am I have literally got large pores in my t-zone area and I hate them. That is why I am very, very oily as well because I have large pores. So having this primer is really, really good. And also you want something that will mattify your skin, but also control the oiliness if you have got oily skin. And you also want a primer that says it smooths. So this one, this optical illusion one, also smooths your skin. So you want to make sure you look at the primers that have a smoothing, a mattifying, a pore perfecting, an oil control or a showing control primer just to get that nice flawless base and to just get that base ready before you apply your foundation. As the same with the moisturiser, you're going to want to make sure you let these little primers sit in place. So I have already applied this one probably about 10 minutes ago. So it's been sitting on my face for about at least 10 minutes and it's had time to work into my face and literally melt into my face so it works nicely. If you are using two primers, again, make sure you're not using them at the same time. You're going to make sure the first one you apply, it sits onto your face um, for about 10-15 minutes before going in with the second one. I've already applied this one because I knew I was going in with this one so I literally take the smallest amount of this product because a lot of this goes a long way like a lot of this goes a long way and then I just rub it between my fingers and then put it like on my problem areas first which is obviously in my T-zones area and then I just put the rest which isn't a lot just around the perimeter of my face and then you want to make sure you're working from the inner to the outer and literally wiping well not wiping like massaging the primer downwards you don't want to put it upwards as when you have hairs on your face and you're pushing any moisturizer or primer up it's going to irritate the hairs and it's going to make them stick up so you want to make sure you're literally applying the primer downwards so it makes everything smoother also a good tip with this one um usually I do but sometimes I don't is to tap it in to your pores that will literally make the product um fill your pores a lot more quicker but I don't tend to do this every time just because it works well enough but if you have got larger pores and you do have a primer that is a little bit more thicker in consistency you don't know what isn't filling your pores try a little bit on your pores section and literally tapping it in place until the product has disappeared that always works for me and yes you've probably guessed once you apply the second primer you're going to want to make sure you let that primer sit in place before going on to your foundation just because it can move about and you just want it to make sure it is sitting on face on your face if you do have a primer and the best way to know if it's ready or not is to just lightly tap your face and if it becomes tacky that's probably when you know it's best to apply your foundation now. Having a tacky primer sometimes is really, really good because you know your foundation is going to stick to that primer and it's literally not going to move anywhere. But moving on to foundation, whilst that primer is setting in place, I'm going to go in with the Too Faced Born This Way foundation, which is also oil-free and I'm in the shade Porcelain. I always used to hear people raving about this foundation. The first girl I heard right about this foundation is Cosmo Bo Haley and I absolutely love her. She is my YouTube inspiration. I just absolutely love her. Honestly, because it's oil free, you don't realise how much of a big difference it does make to my skin. Um, obviously having oily skin, it makes a big, big difference and the foundation lasts a lot more longer on my skin. So that, that is the first thing you want to make sure you're doing when you're going makeup shopping or you're trying to find a new foundation. You want to make sure the foundation is perfect for your skin. Again, I know you, know you hear all these reviews on YouTube, Instagram or whatever and people are raving about these foundations and you're thinking, I really want to get them. But you want to make sure before going ahead and spending 
spending all the money because we all know these foundations aren't that cheap so you want to make sure you're researching into the foundations you're, uh, you're buying or even have a little tester from shops i know some i know some shops do testers so even just go away with a tester or something like that and see if the foundation works for you you need a foundation that works for your skin whether it be dry whether it be oily because if you if you've got dry skin and then you're putting like a matte foundation over the top i know sometimes it works with people but if you have that extra dry skin and then you're wondering why your foundation isn't lying right or your foundation is looking a lot more drier on top of your dry skin that is because you're you're putting like a dehydrated foundation onto your dry skin and it's not really going to look flawless as you want it so you can still like get a mattifying foundation but just with that extra hydration in there for dry skin so you want to make sure you're looking for that as well and Obviously, if you've got oily skin, you want to make sure you are looking for the mattifying foundations and also the foundations that are oil-free, just because it is going to suit our skin a lot better and it's one step close to getting that flawless skin. I just take a few pumps, well, a couple of pumps on each side. Now, people are going to think that you need a lot of foundation to have a flawless base. That is completely wrong in my eyes. I feel like when you apply more foundation, it's a lot more harder to work with. It's going to look a lot more muddier and cakey and it's going to look really, really thick and it's just going to be hard to work with. So, my motto is less is more so you want to make sure you're putting a lot less on your face than what you would in the end so this is what i always start off with and then once i've blended out if i feel like i need more product i do go in now to blend my foundation out religiously again i always use a damp beauty blender i never use a brush i know so i know a brush works for some people which is absolutely fine but for me i just feel like with a brush you're just moving the product around on your face and it's not actually going anywhere it's not blending and it's not melting into your skin the way you want it where with a damp beauty blender it's best to use them damp because it is going to soak up the extra product that you don't need on your face as well but it also means that you can go backwards and forth on top of that product and properly blend it in and melt it into your face which is going to give you that nice base to work with so as you can see you're blending it and you're literally like you're tapping it in to your face so you're not like dragging the product or you're not moving it around and even with them few dots and just that dabbing motion you can see already that the base is looking a lot more smooth than it would be on this side honestly don't need to be like patting your face like really really aggressively i remember when i first brought my beauty blender i thought i literally had to go and beat my face like really really rough but honestly you don't you just need a light base and honestly just let the beauty blender and the foundation do its job together so as you can see just adding that one layer my skin does look a lot more smoother than it did before applying the foundation now that has a lot to do with the moisturizer and letting it sit in place and then putting the first primer on because it suits our skin and because it's also locking the oils and letting it sit in place and then in between of applying the second primer you're letting it soak in and then you go in with the smoothing primer you don't know how, how important it is to have a smoothing primer on, underneath your foundation as i said it's going to smooth everything out and make your base look a lot more better so it's always important to have like a set routine and make sure you're letting things soak in to your face the way they should and also have a smoothing primer they're the things that i swear by so basically now that the foundation is on i just don't touch that at all i always move on to my um thing to my concealer sorry and like the contour and things like that now i wasn't going to put this in the video but then i was thinking it also entails like having the flawless base and i haven't really got a concealer that i swear by obviously i love the duo one and the um Fit Me maybelline one and the revolution super size one they're all absolutely great and i just love them all so they seem to work fine for me but the one i haven't actually used for ages is the um, Naked Skin Urban Decay Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer in the shade Fair Neutral and I absolutely swore by this when I first brought it but the other one I absolutely love is the Fit Me Maybelline Concealer. I think it's such a amazing drugstore concealer. The coverage is there and it's very hydrating underneath the eye. Um, so I'm going to mix these two together. So with the concealer um, to get it more fuller coverage underneath the eye and get the tone right i always like to apply a lighter shade in the inner corner just to brighten it up and a little bit on the forehead a little bit on the chin 
I don't really go on my nose just because my nose can get really oily so I don't like to put a lot of product on my nose so then what I do is I tend to pick a darker shade concealer and mix that in with that lighter concealer and drag this down into my t-zone area just so it blends nicely into the foundation but also so it adds a lot more full out coverage so that is a little tip like if you haven't got enough coverage in your t-zone area instead of applying a lot of foundation just go in with a concealer uh, that is similar to the shade of your foundation or skin and just drag it down and then what I like to do is I just like to let the concealer sit a little bit now if you've got a concealer that you absolutely love and you blend it out straight away and you're thinking it looks good but it doesn't look that good my little trick is letting the concealer just sit on my face without blending it out a little bit this is going to let the product sit a little bit and it's also going to make it a lot more full coverage and when you blend it out it's going to be a lot more flawless i don't know why it looks a lot more flawless when you let it sit it just does i've been doing this absolutely for ages now and it always seems to work for me so i let it sit underneath the eyes a lot longer than i let it sit everywhere else so i always go in and blend out my chin, my cues bow and my forehead before doing the actual under eye. Now moving on to the under eye, I always use the point, but I use like it on the side of the sponge so it blends really nicely together. And I always, always look up when I am blending out my concealer just so it doesn't crease straight away and just so it blends out really, really nicely. Just small motion taps backwards and forwards no swiping is needed. So as I was saying, I always put a darker concealer on underneath my eye just so it blends out really, really nice and I have that nice shade going on. But also because it adds a lot more coverage in my T-zone area, always works for me. So just try that out with your concealers. Always put a lighter one in the corner and then blend it out using a, a similar shade to your foundation but still highlighting that area. And you're probably thinking, why is my makeup looking a lot more powdery? And then throughout the night, you're thinking, why is my makeup not looking, you know, really, really good still? And why isn't it lasting? It's because you're not using a setting spray. Now, I always swear by setting sprays. I know there's some out there that, that literally say that they oil control, they're mattifying, they're going to make your makeup last all night. And it's going to make it look a lot more smoother after you apply it. I know some of them don't work but literally the ones that I have tried literally make a difference to my makeup and it's the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup, it's the Revolution Pro Fix Oil Control but the one I always swear by for my oil control is the Urban Decay one but I've run out of but the one after that is the Pro Fix Oil Control Fixing Spray from uh, from Revolution. I absolutely love this. This always makes my makeup last longer and it also keeps my oils in place. Honestly, with eight this, I don't think my makeup would look as good as it does when I apply it. I don't think my oils would last as long without applying the setting spray as well. So literally, you want to make sure you are setting your face in place. It's going to make your makeup look a lot more better. And it's also going to make your makeup last a lot longer. And especially if you have oily skin or just in general anyway. Then what I and then what I generally like to do is take an old envelope or a piece of paper and literally waft it over my face. You're probably thinking, what is the point in that? But honestly, it makes it dry a lot quicker and it makes your face set a lot quicker and better as well. Last step I like to do to get the flawless face is go in with my damp beauty sponge after setting my face in place and literally go over the top of that and literally press it in to my skin as well again this is going to make it, make it melt into the makeup it's going to make your makeup blend a lot more to your skin and just make everything melt nicely together i also feel like this helps last the setting mist a lot a lot longer as well just literally the few simple simple steps and the little ones is the ones that you don't want to miss out of your routine because they are the most uh, major ones that help you make your makeup look a lot more flawless and make it last. So I've zoomed you in so you don't like say well we didn't see it close with your skin so this is like the way my skin looks now after applying all the products. Very nice and blended and just very nice and settling on the skin. Not too cakey and it still doesn't look like you're wearing a lot of makeup that's why I always say less is more especially when you're using like cream concealers and cream contours you want to make sure you don't use a lot of foundation just because it will 
will make your skin look a lot more textured and cakey but yeah this is my routine of how I get my flawless makeup and it just really really works for me and hopefully you can take a few tips from the way I do my makeup as well so guys, this is the end result. I really hope you go away from this video and take some tips and tricks from me. That was the whole idea and intention of doing this video for you guys. As I said, I've been wanting to do this video for a very long time, but I first wanted to make sure products worked for me and made sure my routine worked for me as well. And as you can see, I've been doing this routine for such a long time and I do it religiously and I swear by it always helps my makeup last a lot longer so make sure you just try and find products that suit your skin and not go on what everybody else is using that's probably the best tip i can actually give you as well i really do hope this video did help you out in helping you with your foundation and primer guide and things like that but let me know if it did help you out by giving this tutorial a big thumbs out i really want to see how many likes we can actually get on this video and how many people i did help and how many people um took away some tips and tricks from this video but yeah this is the end of the video i really hope you enjoyed watching it don't forget to subscribe and follow me on my instagram page but yeah without further ado i love you all so much thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye guys